burst into the spotlight when it comes to education not too long ago. Because of that protest, you'll remember, that led to the shutdown of schools, the huge repercussions for those learners, many of them having to repeat the, la uh, the, the year there uh, at the John Daolo Khaizi, where that debacle uh, has been sorted out, some hiccups still here and there, but the Premier in her state of the province address highlighting that 61 schools will be upgraded, 51 classrooms will be erected, six schools to be built, so a lot of movement on that front. But on table number 22, we have Kitu Medzi from Seeds of Life, who has an education-related question. So Kitu Medzi, good morning to you. The floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my question is to the Department of Education, to Ms. Griselda Chigela Lecholo. I'm a bit concerned about our education because I've realized that most of our educators are going out for professional, like going into business. So I just want to establish from Ms. Chigela that does the education have a plan B for the educators that are leaving the education sector to replace them? Because my concern is that we'll be having schools and we'll be having empty classrooms that doesn't have teachers. It's a green concern to me. I just want to need clarity on that one. Thank you. Maybe I should say to Kitumet that the, the reality is we can't stop them if they want to exit and go into business. That's the unfortunate part. But we've got many programs in the department that we encourage our learners to study education. We've also been giving bursaries as a department for learners who want to study in the field, especially mathematics, physical science, and accounting. But we also have the Funza Lusaka program, as you all know, that is a national program that we, as a Northern Cape, also participated. And after those students have finished their course, we place them in the different schools in the province as part of the program that the national minister have announced. But also we need to make use of the, our own graduates that we have resource to study education. The plan B, of course, is to encourage our, our learners to study education. The, we were in one meeting where we discussed the matter, especially with the Premier, to say that we are very encouraging with all the stakeholders who want to invest in the Northern Cape. But we are worried when they, they don't give us resources to encourage our learners to study education. Because you will, you will get a mining company who will give bursaries for students to, to study mining. We'll get the company will give students bursaries to study in any other field, but not education. And it's only upon the government to give bursaries for students who want to study education. That is a worrying factor. But we are encouraging our students to study education. I must say, I'm actually very excited that most of the students who ask for bursaries, not only from the Premier's bursary fund, but also from education, because we also have some, some bursaries in the department, have requested funding to study in the field of education. And for us, it's encouraging, not only at Solplay University, but also at other neighboring uh, universities in the, in the province. And that is a matter that, that's why I said it's unfortunate that there's nothing that I can do if you want to go out of the system and you want to go in and, and, and do business outside. But of course, you must do it outside the system. You must, that's why the Minister of Public uh, Administration have announced that we don't want public servants to do business with government. If you want to become a businesswoman or a businessman, okay, you will receive your resignation and will welcome it, and then you can go into business. But we are in a process of encouraging and training more learners mm. to study education so that we don't have a, a challenge of not having teachers in class. Okay. But of course, I've mentioned it on several occasions, we do have challenges, especially in your, your gateway subjects, that we cannot uh, attract teachers to stay in the province who teach mathematics, who teach physical mm. science. And, and if so I may on. interject there, my apologies, mm. MEC, mm. the mathematics one is a huge concern in the uh, annual national assessment results of last year, 92.4% of grade nines achieved between 0 to 29% yeah. in mathematics. 92.4% of them, that's almost all the grade yes. nines, yes. having received below 29%, between 0 and 29% for mathematics. That's a grave concern, is it not? No, it is. It is a great concern, Ayana. 
that's why in the Northern Cape we have put in place some intervention programs to assist, assist those grade uh, 9, grade, and actually grade 10 to 12 learners who come from grade 9 because the assessment tells us that on our challenge is in grade 9, as you correctly say, so because you will see there's improvement in the other grades, but there's this bottleneck in grade 9 that you don't know what is a problem. But as you will be aware that the grade, grade 12 matric results show that there's a decline in mathematics. But in the Northern Cape, we have actually improved. So it tells you that the programs that we have implemented in the Northern Cape, like your HMS program, it's a very good program that we have. It's a very interactive program, and it has assisted us in improving our math results. And, but the challenge still remains, how do we attract teachers who, who teach in those, those uh, gateway subjects, how do we keep them in the Northern Cape? Because they see this province as a rural province and that, that there's no nightclubs and what, where they, they can the big see, lights of there's Gauteng. no big lights of Gauteng. <laughs> All but right. those are some of the things that we are looking okay. into. All right, well, let's go to table number 17 now. Table number 17 is where we can find Ephraim. Ephraim wants to uh, applaud the minister on your call for uh, all people in the province to take hands and fight the scourge of crime, but he has raised one or two issues. So Ephraim, if you're ready, will you stand for us? And uh, you can go ahead and ask your question, please. Thanks, uh, Ayanda. No, what we are saying as the CPF in the province is that we appreciate the call for active participation of citizens of the province in the fight against crime. The thing that we are having is, you know, compared to what committees, CPFs have not been resourced as what committees have been enjoying that privilege. The other issue is, we, spoke, we speak about gangsters in our communities. There's a lot of gangster-related uh, uh, incidences that have been spoken to, that have been felt by our communities. But the problem is, you know, even in our schools, there's bullying, there's gangsters that are emerging from, from, from the schools and go right into the communities. So what we're saying is the police in our province, it's time that we really need to look at why don't we form a gangster unit within the police that would fight these gangs the issue of speaking about the strategy and all these things is just delaying the process more and more because our communities are, are suffering and are dying outside there that's the issue thanks Premier, um, perhaps you can answer that, and I forgot to give you the disclaimer live on air that you're more than welcome to delegate answers to uh, any of, shall we call them, the foot soldiers on the ground uh, if you want them to elaborate on anything, but please, by all means, do continue. Thank you. We have invited the Deputy Provincial Commissioner to be here of the police because we know that crime is also something that is now uh, an issue, and we have elaborated on the issue of crime in the province. If crime is the, on the provincial structure of the Community Policing Forum. And they have been knocking on our doors because of the issue that CPFs are not uh, resourced. We are discussing this thing with the police. We must also remember that the police is a national competency. But in our province, we have decided to work together with the line departments so that there should not be a lot of contradictions. We are not yet 100% successful in addressing issues with the line departments, but we are building a relationship with the South African Police Service to make sure that we address the issues that are outstanding. One of the things that is very important, I heard him speaking about issue of gang units or what and so on. One of the things that is very important is the issue of crime prevention. And that is where the, 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 the rest of us are coming in to assist not only the police, but also the CPFs and the CSFs to work on the issue of crime prevention. And that is something where a whole community can make a difference. So we, we realize that they have got programs that are not necessarily resourced, but there is a lot that you can do without resources, just by interacting with communities and activating communities to make sure we address the whole issue of crime and especially gang-related crime. Because it is a fact that, especially last year, we had a problem in Kimberley schools 
with the, the issue of gangsterism that all of a sudden erupted. We don't know what happened, but last year especially, I have not heard of incidences this year yet, but last year there was a, really a problem in Kimberley schools especially about gangsterism. But together with the police, together with the Department of Education, and together with other stakeholders, we have been working to make sure that there is a program on how to address this issue. And especially the, is it school safety program that is also there that has been rolled out by Department of Education to make sure that we address especially the issue of gangsterism. But I maintain the issue of crime prevention is a very important issue and I think the, the police in the province need to begin to focus more on that side of the of the crime issue. Mm. Also touching on community involvement, let's go perhaps to table number 10 now, uh, where ESC, I think is how you pronounce, ESC Reed, uh, wants to speak about why the province is not so NGO friendly. We know these non-profit organizations or non-governmental organizations uh, make a lot of interventions in one way or another to assist members of the community. Uh, they say they're struggling for supporters, according to uh, ESC Reed here, table number 10. If I am mispronouncing your name, I do apologize. It's right. Uh, morning, everybody. Um, first of all, I want to thank the Premier for involvement in the, in the communities as, at large. But um, here in Kimberley, I'm having a problem for the last three years. I'm really struggling. Um, the Department of Social Development, I'm running up and down, meeting in, meeting out, but nothing happened because we are working with the poorest of the poor the where I am working. And the Premier, uh, she knows about it. She tries the best to come and help me. But please, guys, most of these MECs, Help those NGOs who's knocking on your doors. Because at times, like in, um, we're having the Mandela Day, né? then we go out there, we write some letters to the MECs, ask them for help, or just to come and join us for the day. But they don't even respond to our letters or reply to say, no, we can't make it. Please, guys, let's make us the Northern Cape uh, uh, NGO-friendly province. I, I'm laughing because myself and Essie has been interacting and we've been having a lot of, of uh, very good collaboration on some of our programs and so on. But I must say, the issue of the absence of NGOs in the first instance is a concern. We don't have enough NGOs in the Northern Cape and we are encouraging people to come to the fore because there is different fields where NGOs can uh, assist the government to, uh, to do better community outreach to, to really get to the, 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 the bottom of the issues that are plaguing our communities. But I, I, I don't want to put the MEC and the HOD on the spot because it's also more a her personal NGO issue, but I'm sure they have heard. Because when she was standing there, we, I was smiling because she was just standing behind the MEC <laughs> and the HOD. So both of them was just in close proximity to take note of, 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 of her issue per se, but also we want the community at large to take note of the need for non-governmental and community-based organizations to address issues with the assistance of government. It will just help us because they can become the foot soldiers of government to ensure that we address the issues that are plaguing our communities. Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick ad break, but before we do, this is what we're going to talk about after the break. Uh, on Twitter, Tamsaina Mayeki saw saying agriculture is big and successful in the north in Cape. The question is, how far is the land redistribution process, especially on farms? Tamsanga will take your question. It's very similar to that of uh, Aneles on table 14, so perhaps she can add her voice as well, and we'll tackle that issue in just a moment. Stay with us.